Today in the OPD, we encountered an intriguing case that highlights the complexities of mysterious corneal deposits, something which threw us into a severe diagnostic dilemma. Here we present a 65-year-old female who came to us in OPD with blurring of vision with significant glare progressing gradually over the past year. On slit lamp examination, there were multiple diffuse corneal opacities, more like tense lesions which appeared to be at the level of endothelium. On examining the other eye, we could note exact similar findings. At first glance, we thought that it could be a case of posterior polymorphous corneal dystrophy. Therefore, we advised for an anterior segment OCT imaging to see the level of these deposits. But it also made us ponder, what if it is an abnormal presentation of Fuchs endothelial corneal dystrophy? So we also performed specular microscopy. Upon looking at her AS OCT images, we were still unsure whether the testament membrane is overlying the deposits or are the deposits overlying the DM. To our surprise, specular microscopy in both the eyes revealed presence of cutte, which led us to even more confusion. Her rest of the ocular examination was within normal limits. Upon reviewing the literature, we found that corneal abnormality in PPMD occurs at the level of DM and endothelium. There are three main patterns in which PPMD presents like endothelial vesicle-like lesions, band-like lesions and diffuse opacities. Whereas in Fuchs endothelial dystrophy, the endothelial layer becomes dysfunctional due to accumulation of extracellular matrix material that collect in cutte. Therefore, both of them are bilateral, while corneal edema can occur in PPMD, but it is not a hallmark, whereas corneal edema is common in Fuchs. Being two entirely different entities, our patient had features of both at the time of presentation, making us wonder if our case is an atypical variant of PPMCD. Since the deposits were in center and obscuring her vision, we plan to perform Desmet's membrane endothelial keratoplasty with phacoemulsification as patient had cataract and we also send the deposits for histopathological examination. After creating a sideboard at 10 o'clock position, trypan blue dye is injected to check whether these deposits take up any stain or not. We found out that they do not take up any stain. And now we score the Desmet's membrane with the reverse and ski hook. A more peripheral approach is taken with the aim of removing the DM in one go along with the deposits. And now as we try to scrape the DM, as you can see, the DM is not coming off so easily. Rather, it is tearing up in parts along with the deposits. These deposits have a very gritty feel to them. Kind of like you get when you remove the somering ring. Now we try to remove these deposits with a single port aspiration cannula. But it was not very effective. So, we made a bigger entry and tried to visco-express these deposits out. The bigger deposits could come out with visco-expression and we sent them for histopathological examination. It was getting very difficult to remove these deposits adequately, so we attempted to remove them with single port aspiration cannula once again. We finally attempted with bimanual irrigation and aspiration cannula. The smaller residual deposits could be removed with this technique. We ensured here to clear all the deposits adequately.
And now as the anterior chamber appears clean, we can proceed with our routine phaco emulsification surgery. A foldable IOL is implanted in the bag. Now we check for any desmid membrane remnants. We don't find any residual DM here, indicating that entire DM was scraped off earlier during desmetorexis along with the deposits. All the viscoelastic substance was cleared off from the anterior chamber before placing the graft. A small PI is made at 5 o'clock position. DM roll is now injected in correct orientation. Gentle taps are done on the surface to unfold the DM roll. Graft centration is achieved and a full chamber air is injected. BCL is placed at the end of the surgery. We appreciate how our cornea appears clean after the surgery and the graft is well attached giving the patient best corrected visual acuity of 6 by 9 at the end of one month. On tracing the histopathology report, we found that there was a presence of pass positive desmid membrane with cutte formation and few endothelial cells with focal amorphous deposits. The immunohistochemistry report revealed cytokeratin deposits along the lines of desmid membrane. The pathogenesis of PPMD is attributed to an abnormal development differentiation of endothelial cells where the morphology of endothelial cell resemble to those of the epithelium and cytokeratin is an epithelial cell marker. Why Gatte was still present in speculomicroscopy microscopy as well as histopathology still remains unanswered. We could only encounter the following reason for this coexistence could be some genetic mutation. Therefore, on joining the pieces of this puzzle, we present to you this rare case of posterior polymorphous corneal dystrophy with cutting.